Now this video will contain mild spoilers for The Mandalorian's Season 2, so if you haven't watched it already, then go ahead and give it a look and then come back and watch this video. Now to start things off, I would say that it is no secret that the Disney sequel trilogy have split the fanbase into, on the very least, two parts, mostly with their rather poor execution and disregard to already pre-existing lore and already pre-established characters and how those characters actually are or should be. And as far as it goes, Disney is fully aware of this as the toys and the merchandise sales regarding those films have dramatically declined ever since episode 7 basically. And the perfect example of that being that there are no new LEGO sets regarding the Rise of Skywalker in the next wave of Star Wars sets, but instead the wave is focused around the original trilogy and The Mandalorian as well. And if we were to contrast this to what The Force Awakens had in the form of LEGO sets, The Force Awakens sets released right up until 2017 and there was even one set that was released a smaller one in 2019. So you basically had on the very least a two-year period where those sets from The Force Awakens were released. And now you have none of that with The Rise of Skywalker. As the first season of The Mandalorian debuted in October of 2019, there was a rather curious interview or excerpt from an interview regarding Giancarlo Esposito who plays Moff Gideon and he claimed that the show would explore the birth of the First Order which is of course the threat present in the Disney sequel films and of course also in 2019 The Rise of Skywalker was released and therefore it would be a logical conclusion that The Mandalorian would tie into that film as both the show and the film are set after Return of the Jedi. But after the season finale of The Mandalorian, it was blatantly obvious that this was just some kind of promotional or cross-promotional attempt to get the fans excited to watch the new film as the reaction to The Mandalorian has been overwhelmingly positive from the fan base. And even in season 2 of The Mandalorian, we can see references to creating force sensitive clones or even the fact that Moff Gideon references restoring order to the galaxy and it being his only priority. And the thing is about these references is that they are too vague to connect The Mandalorian into the Disney films. And I believe that it was done rather intentionally from the writers and most importantly John Favreau and Dave Filoni as they are well aware of the reaction that those films have gotten and they know why they didn't necessarily capture what the original trilogy did in terms of fan reaction. And they made those references vague in order to cater for every fan who has enjoyed the sequel trilogy as those references can be connected to certain characters or certain things in those films. But at the same time they are not flat out connecting those or saying that those things are a reference to certain characters in those films. And I believe if they wanted to retcon or overwrite the Disney sequel trilogies they could do that with the world between worlds which was introduced in Star Wars Rebels under Dave Filoni. But I believe that they wouldn't necessarily use that approach as it would be confusing for the general audience as still many fans seem to believe that the world between worlds is just a sort of time travel within the Star Wars universe. But the bigger question is if the Mandalorian indeed reference these characters and teams like Snoke and the First Order. Why didn't they just flat out say it in the show? And I believe the reason for that is because the show wants to do its own thing and to steer itself clear as far away from those Disney films as possible without angering any side of the fan base by just basically ignoring those events as they are still set far away into the future of the universe. And another important point when it comes to retconning is that Disney as a corporation doesn't want to admit that they have made a mistake with those films 
and therefore it is highly unlikely that those sequel films will be officially decanonized in the foreseeable future, but by providing quality and authentic Star Wars stories, The Mandalorian and future shows, if slowly but surely, are retconning the Disney sequel trilogy, as even the higher-ups at Disney understand that those films are not the future of Star Wars, but the John Favreau and Dave Filoni let Star Wars universe is. But what do you think about retconning the Disney sequels? Is it something that you would want to happen, or would you rather it doesn't? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, and thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, remember to keep it insightful.